Well, the lesson here is as follows. Some might think, why should I ask someone else for advice? If I ask someone else for advice, it shows that I'm weak and I can't make my own decisions. Well, the reason you have to ask a mentor is you're on your own and we are all highly subjective beings. We're, we're all subjective. We all love ourselves. The love to yourself makes you blinded. To help yourself with your own personal issues and solutions, it will not work. Sometimes you make decisions that makes you feel good better than making decisions that's going to put you in a better place. And therefore, it is so important that someone else should help you make a decision, not you on your own. An honest, unbiased appraisal of your situation, because you yourself have a hard time making your own decision. Because, like we said before, you're subjective. The Red Lubavitcher Rebbe spoke about this many, many times in the early 80s. He spoke about how important it is. Not only to know how important it is to appoint a mentor, which we call a Rav, but you must do it immediately. It's urgent to every aspect of your life. You know, many people would write to the Rebbe and ask him for advice all the time. The Rebbe would encourage, that we would ask the Rebbe what to do. The Rebbe would answer, ask someone else. Ask a, 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 an honorable rabbi, a Talmud Chacham, a, a, a mentor, and so on and so forth. Let's unpack this even further. In today's era of self-awareness, worry about personal mental health, Many people are very aware of their own issues, which many years ago, they would hide it under the rug when they had personal issues. They used to think it's better to keep it quiet and not to reveal it to others. Today, everything is in public. They want to discuss the trauma of their childhood and so on and so forth. And many people are more aware of their problems and their blind spots. The irony is that as much as much as we keep on identifying our problems and as much as we keep on doing this, we're as much in loss. So we identify it, but we're still in a loss. How do I fix these problems? Some people say we're less equipped to fix our problems. When you know your problems deep inside, it can make you handicapped to have the right tools to fix it. That's one way of looking at it. So therefore, don't make a mistake that you think you'll be able to fix it yourself. Self-awareness equals self-improvement. But that's not the case. You must get a mentor that's going to help you. Because self-awareness and self-improvement are two different worlds. And they're two different sides of the coin. Completely. And a regular person has a hard, a hard time to bridge self-improvement with self-awareness. So therefore, you should nominate a mentor that loves you, you love him, and you honor him. And this fact that we met, mentioned before, that if you're in prison, you cannot be redeemed yourself, this applies to the greatest and the most simple. You might be a very honorable person. 
You might be respected in the community. You also need a mentor. Not only for Judaism, but even for worldly things. Should I live here? Should I live here? Should I buy a house there? Should I buy a house somewhere else? And so on and so forth. It's a way of, of getting an unbiased opinion. A mentor could help you when you're stuck. And even when you don't realize you're stuck. A, a mentor could be for someone in all extremes. Either because you're mixed up in life and you can't figure out where you're heading. And you're overwhelmed. That's good to have a mentor, of course, in those circumstances. And for someone else that's very organized and he seems to have everything perfect in his life, he also needs it might not realize that he needs it. And the Rebbe explained that it's so important to ask them all types of questions, even though you're afraid of the answer. You're afraid that something, you can ask them about prayer, about Torah study, about your, your spiritual level. You're afraid of what they're going to answer you. So you don't want to ask the question. Well, just go ahead and ask it because obviously it's somebody that loves you, that cares about you, that's going to give you the correct advice. So the most simple idea of all of this is you should be accountable to someone else. And this will improve your behavior. You know you're accountable. You know you have to give, as we say in Hebrew, a din v'cheshbon, you have to give an accounting to someone else. Like you have to do every quarter or every year. Search for a mentor, a friend, and a teacher. It's worth it for you. You will see how happier you will be. In previous generations, or better more, in recent generations, we call it a therapist or a psychologist. In the older generations, they would look at the word therapist or psychologist or psychiatrist as something negative. Someone would look at you that something's wrong with you if you're seeing a therapist. If you're normal and healthy, you don't need a therapist. Today, it became very positive. The Mishnah in Pirkei Avot already said, I say, like a rab, appoint a mentor, which could translate a therapist. So, the right therapist can fulfill your goals. Not necessarily Jewish, but obviously it's better if it's Jewish. But we're not really only talking about the therapist idea, but if you feel you need a therapist, there's nothing wrong or down with getting a therapist. But also we're referring more to a rabbi or a, a good friend that's on a higher level spiritually than you, that you could trust and so on and so forth. So the drive of our generation is, is that people are looking for help. And it's in line with the Mishnah that says, appoint a mentor. You can't work it out on your own. Even when someone's in a marriage and they're struggling, they cannot work it out on their own. They have to find help because they're in it. If someone's not getting along with their boss or a coworker or, or a family member, best is to get someone else that's not biased to help you out in the circumstances. This is, this, is a, this is key and important in order for us to enhance our relationship with others and enhance our connection in life in general. And this, this is what the Rebbe is bringing out from this idea of the slavery. Of course, he cannot redeem himself first. Because he's in the pit. He's in a very low level. He needs help. After someone else helps him, then he could redeem himself. So if someone is struggling in their life, call someone to help you. If someone helps you, then you'll be able to work on yourself and your own personal struggles. And this is also why it doesn't mention the father, because unfortunately, he doesn't have the father in the life. He doesn't have that figure in, within him. It's not missing but it's lost it's it's lost in um in the depth of his soul so this 
is the spiritual explanation of this uh, slavery idea. And this might answer your question actually, Steve, because when we speak about it spiritually, it actually makes more sense than uh, speaking about it physically when it's the literal slavery. And it could be Hashem is trying to give us a, a lesson that, you know, listen, uh, we're slaves to Hashem. All right, any questions? Can you hear me, Rabbi? Yes. Yeah. So um, I heard what you were saying about maybe seeking a mentor, but but if one is, I think the Rebbe always, you tell me, maybe I have this wrong. The Rebbe always stressed to be positive and have a positive outlook, right? Obviously, you need help, you seek out help. But I think, I don't even think the Rebbe ever used the word bad. He used the word not good. And right. I think that he advised people like to do, to do good and you'll feel better by doing good. And I think that's also very, you know, very good advice. Yes. To go beyond yourself and um, and have a positive outlook. Sure. And I think that's important as well. Um, yeah. Obviously, you can help you seek help, but I think by doing good, you think positive. And um, I was always impressed by him saying, but not using the word bad. Right. He, not, he thought positivity. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the thing is also, like, if somebody wants to know their schedule, okay, how much Torah should I study? Which part of the Torah should I study? How should I deal with certain circumstances? And, you know, uh, how should I occupy my free time or, you know, things like that, that are, that are gray areas in Judaism is good to have a mentor because he understands your situation and he, you discuss it with him. And then that helps you uh, make the proper decision. Yes, but that's a good point, Steve. Yes. Another point. Yes. If you if you ever talk to a therapist, the first thing they'll tell you is, you know, the answers are on the back of your neck. You just can't see them. It's right here. You need someone else sometimes to 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 read what's written behind your head, you know, like. Right. That's a good point. Yeah. And then it's actually that the point of basically what what the idea is, is that it's it's within you. You just have to has to be uncovered either by you or by somebody else. Yes, absolutely. And, and it's just simple words in the Talmud. It says if somebody has a worry in their mind, they should share it with others. And that and that's, solves half of the problem because it, it, it lets it out and it makes you feel better when you spoke to someone else about it. You know, you could talk to someone else even for an hour and the other guy that you're talking to maybe says one word in the whole conversation, but you still feel good because someone else was listening to you and, and someone cares about your, your struggles which uh, no one's free from struggles unless you're uh, even animals have some sense of struggles, but uh, no one's free from it. Baruch Hashem keeps us busy for good things. All right. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Thank you. Zai gesund. All the best. Have a good evening, everyone. Good night.